Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, I'm Carrie, and on this channel we talk all about bags. Before we get into today's video, I had an exciting announcement. And that is, this video is the start of a new series on my channel called To All The Bags I've Loved Before. <laughs> so for those of you who have followed my channel since the very beginning, you'll know that I've been talking about the bags that I own, doing in-depth reviews of them, doing unboxing videos, wear and tear updates and the like. But I've decided that I'm gonna branch out from my own collection because I actually have quite a small but curated collection. And hopefully you'll see that soon in my bag collection video. And there are so many more bags out there that I love, but for various reasons, I decided I wouldn't add to my collection. And I wanted this series to be a light-hearted but fun way for me to share my bag selection process and also to explain a little bit about how I intentionally curate my bag collection. And on intentional buying, I just wanted to say that there is a YouTube channel that I find so inspiring and that is Colourful Noir. Eileen talks all about intentional spending. So if you're interested in the concept, uh, especially when it comes to intentional spending in the luxury sphere, definitely, definitely check out Colourful Noir. I'll leave um, a link to her channel down below. But anyway, so this series that I'm gonna start is gonna be lighthearted and fun, and each video will focus on a different bag that once upon a time I really, really, really wanted. Um, and I almost bought, but then I'll explain the reasons why I didn't get them in the end. So I really hope you enjoy this. Let me know how you found this video um, in the comments section because I'm so curious, obviously, to hear your thoughts on this new series. Let me know uh, if there's any particular bag that you've once upon a time wanted to buy but then decided against it. And I hope you really enjoy it. So without further ado, Let's start. So the first bag I wanted to talk to you guys about is the Bottega Veneta padded cassette. Oh, this one is a difficult one because it's such a popular bag still and I didn't expect it to stay in trend for so long. Um, but yeah, when I first saw it, it was I think only out for a few months. Um, this is obviously one of Daniel Lee's brilliant creations. Uh, along with, at the time, the, the I, what is it called? The cloud clutch bag, you know, the one that Rosie Huntington Whiteley just carried everywhere. Um, and this was the time when the padded cassette was all over Instagram, you know, every social media influencer seemed to have the padded cassette bag. And at the time, the price, I think, was around 1,900-ish. It hadn't reached the price point it is now, like now it's, I think, £2,600 or something, which is just insane to me. Um, but yeah, at the time I saw the design, I absolutely loved it. I love the fact that it looks super casual and edgy, um, and also that it was just a simple crossbody bag. Bags. So I really, really, really loved this bag. I loved the design. It was unique and yet very simple. Uh, again, it goes with my whole low-key aesthetic I want to say and so I really really wanted to get this bag what happened was I saw the bag in person I went to the Bottega Veneta store in London and there were a few things that I didn't expect about the bag that I only discovered when I went to see it so the first thing was the the clasp I just had assumed looking at the photos of the bag that it was a magnetic closure. And so it would just be a simple, you know, open the flap, close the flap kind of business. But it turns out it is a closure that requires you to push the, the thing down, the flap down before you can open it. So it, it, it was a very weird feature in my eyes. I just didn't understand why you would make a bag where the clasp was, 
so difficult to open and I tried it a couple of times in the store and it's not necessarily just because it's difficult to open that kind of put me off it's also because the leather is so so soft and the puffiness is a really soft kind of puffiness that I just thought if I keep pressing down too hard on the flap to open the flap would the puffiness at that one spot over time become really worn out would it then ultimately lose its puffiness and so that clasp really bothered me the second thing was when I opened the bag the bag inside was completely unlined um, which was interesting because you know it's nice because it's all leather but <laughs> because it's a woven bag it kind of bothered me that it wasn't lined because I just thought all my stuff is going to get caught in the weaving um, and maybe I was just being crazy because what thing would you actually have in your bag that would get caught on you know the leather but I just thought it's a super delicate bag the inside is unlined and there is this potential that things would catch on the inside and I definitely would want to protect it so I just didn't want to risk I didn't want to risk it with a bag that was you know really expensive I mean obviously now it's even more expensive but at the time it was pretty expensive already so that was the second thing and the third thing was I hadn't appreciated how little you can actually put in the bag I think I assumed because it's a crossbody bag that it would be fairly spacious but in the end um, I compared it with my YSL camera bag um, which I can actually show you um, I don't know where I've put it right now, but I'll put a picture of it up on the screen. And compared to the camera bag, it didn't fit as much stuff, even though the size looked comparable. And I think the reason was because the, because the leather was padded, the padding on the inside effectively made the bag smaller on the inside, so you couldn't store as much stuff, and it's definitely not the kind of bag where you wanted to stuff things in because you know again the inside was all leather so you really didn't want to overstretch or damage the interior of your bag at all so when I saw it in person all my you know dreamy ideas of me carrying this cassette bag kind of just went away because I realized that as much as I loved love love the design and I still love the design today it was just not going to be a practical bag for me um, and so yeah, so that's why I decided against the Bottega Veneta padded cassette. Now for those of you who have this bag, please tell me whether or not I have made a bad decision and whether or not actually this bag totally stands up to the test of time. I'd be so curious to hear your thoughts. So, yeah. Thank you so much for checking out today's video. I hope you really enjoyed it and I hope that you will keep watching this series on my channel. For those of you who are not subscribed, please do subscribe below and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this because all your support really, really helps me. So thank you again and see you next time.